OK, so you've constructed your plasmid. Are you now ready to get it into the plant cells? There are two types of delivery systems you can actually use. One which uses naked DNA and one which is vectored. And these have advantages and disadvantages. The problem with transformation of plant cells is that the cell wall is the primary resistance to DNA uptake. So the cell wall, it may, while it may be very permeable to small molecular weight molecules like water or sucrose, it's quite impermeable to large molecular weight molecules like plasmid DNA. So we have to find a way of getting our plasmid through the cell wall. And we can do this either using naked DNA or vectored DNA. Biolistics is by far the most important method for getting naked DNA into cells. Though it is possible to dissolve the cell wall, get the, cell, the DNA in that way, by electroporation, by pollen transformation, so the cell walls of germinating pollen grains are very thin indeed and are actually permeable to plasmid DNA. And this has proven to be a very effective way of getting plant cell transformation. So you take your pollen, you add your DNA to the pollen, you put it onto the stigma of a receptive plant and as the pollen germinates it takes up the DNA and you get the plasmid DNA incorporated into the nuclear DNA and expressed in the seeds that are subsequently produced. The final one, silicon carbide fibres. It is possible to use silicon carbide fibres. It was developed as an alternative to biolistics in the early 1980s but there are some disadvantages to using silicon carbide fibres and I haven't seen any use of it for about the last 20 years but I put it in here for completeness. The other alternative is to use a living organism as a vector and the ones which have been used mostly are agrobacterium and viruses. So how do we get our genes into the cells? So you'll find that the two techniques are very widely used all the protocols which I've provided for you on transformation have transformation via agrobacterium or by biolistics, that is by particle guns. So agrobacterium is a natural genetic engineer. It causes crown galls. It very efficiently transforms mo most dicotyledonous plants, but it has been problematical with monocots. This is a problem for us because, as you saw earlier, most of the most important crop plants are actually monocots. Now, in the 1970s and early 1980s, when they're looking at agrobacterium as a means for getting genes into cells, they looked at infectivity. So they tried infecting a wide range of different monocots and dicots, and they found that when they transformed monocots, with agrobacterium they got gall formation whereas with dicotyledonous plants like corn or with rice they didn't get gall formation and they concluded from that that agrobacterium did not infect monocots. Now this isn't strictly true. One of the problems with transformation of monocots with agrobacterium is that monocots actually respond differently to auxin and cytokinin genes. So Agrobacterium tumefaciens engineers auxin and cytokinin genes into the nucleus of the, trans of the cells it's infecting and in dicotyledonous plants equimolar amounts of auxin and cytokinin will lead to uh, um, a proliferation of cells so you actually get a callus formed or a gall formed. This doesn't happen in monocots for two reasons. The first is that monocots respond differently to auxins and cytokinins than dicotyledonous plants do. And the second thing is that they have a requirement for different phenolic compounds. 
So monocotyledonous plants actually secrete different phenolic compounds when they're wounded than dicotyledonous plants. And the agrobacterium needs these phenolic compounds in order to activate the transformation process. And with an understanding of this, it is possible to actually to get agrobacterium transformation in monocotyledonous plants. For example, rice has been transformed with agrobacterium. So agrobacterium is used extensively for getting genes into cells. Something else which is used extensively is biolistics, which uses particle guns. And it works. And one of the advantages is that there's no residual agrobacterium that you have to get rid of. And it can be used with different DNAs to probe gene function. So it's possible to blast in, for example, uh, messenger RNAs or cDNAs from a, a wide variety of different genes and examine their functions in a wide variety of different tissues. And can, this can all be done with transient expression. So you don't need to get stable expression just to probe gene function. So it can be done quickly and easily in a matter of days. For transformation with agrobacterium, the agrobacterium contains a bacterial chromosome, it's fair enough, but for our purposes it contains a circle of DNA external to that, the TI plasmid, that carries the desired genes and genes that are going to promote the transformation process. And the way that we achieve transformation with agrobacterium is through co-cultivation of the agrobacterium with plant pieces. And this results in transfer of the DNA into the plants, as you can see down the bottom. I'm going to blow up now the TDNA, the TI plasmid because there are different kinds of vectors that are actually used. So when you're looking at a protocol which has transformation with agrobacterium, sometimes you'll find that they use what are called co-integrative vectors. Sometimes they use what are called binary vectors. So on the right hand side of these two cells you have the bacterial chromosome. On the left hand side you have on the co-integrative vector you have the TI plasmid. And the TI plasmid is in one piece. So it's got the virulence genes down at the bottom. They're actually going to force the uh, transformation. And at the top in red, you've got the tDNA. The tDNA is the only bit of the DNA which actually gets put into plant cells. And you've got a left border and a right border. And the virulence genes actually cause, encodes four nucleases that nick out this red DNA here between the left border and the right border. So everything which is between the left border and the right border gets nicked out. Now in co-integrative vectors, the virulence genes and the tDNA are on the same plasmid. But it's not necessary. So you can actually split that plasmid into two. One, into two plasmids. One plasmid contains the virulence genes and this always stays with the agrobacterium and the other plasmid is a shuttle vector that can be expressed in agrobacterium and also expressed in E. coli to so produce the so-called binary vector. So you've got the uh, TI plasmid split into two. One bit contains virulence genes, stays in the agrobacterium. Another bit can be shuttled between agrobacterium and E. coli. And because you've got a smaller plasmid, it makes manipulation of the plasmid so much easier. There are so many fewer restriction sites that you have to worry about when you're doing your bacterial manipulations. So the bulk of agrobacterium transformations are now done with binary vectors rather than co-integrative vectors. So Agrobacterium is a natural uh, uh, genetic engineer. There are two species, Agrobacterium, which produces Tumefaciens, which produces a gall, and Agrobacterium rhizogenes, which produces roots. And the reasons that they produce a gall or only produce roots is because of the presence of what are called oncogenes. Aux, uh, Agrobacterium Tumefaciens has genes for auxin and cytokinin synthesis. Remember from your earlier micropropagation studies, 
Equimolar amounts of auxin and cytokinin will tend to give you cell proliferation, you end up with a goal. Agrobacterium rhizogenes only has genes for auxin synthesis, it doesn't have the genes for cytokinin synthesis. And they also have genes for what are called opines. Opines are a combination of an amino acid and an organic acid. They have advantages for agrobacterium in that the agrobacterium can metabolize these things but plants can't. So through goal formation the agrobacterium is getting the plants to produce it with a home. Through opine production it's getting the plant to produce a food supply that can only be used by the agrobacterium. Now, in the late 1970s, early 1980s, people doing transformations tended to use wild type uh, agrobacterium that had these auxin cytokinin genes in it, also had genes for opine production. And it was useful in one way in that you could detect transformed cells by the production of opines. But the auxin and cytokinin genes actually do cause aberrations in phenotype in the cells. So you end up with wrinkly leaves, you end up with roots being produced all over the place. And you also have these opines being produced that the plant can't metabolize. So most agrobacteria mediated transformation nowadays is done with what are called disarmed plasmids. The genes for auxin and cytokinin synthesis and opine production have actually been excised. And this makes the plasmid smaller and we can replace those genes with genes that we're interested in like genes for neomycin phosphotransferase 2 so we can select on calamycin a calamycin group antibiotics GUS so that we can select for on a visual basis and genes of interest like the crystal toxin genes in the presence of exudates, these are mainly phenolics like acetosyringone from wounded plants, the virulence genes are activated and this causes the tDNA, that bit that was in red, to be excised and everything between the left and right border is transferred. So if you want to transform a monocot, monocots don't actually produce acetosyringone in large quantities so you won't get your virulence genes activated but you can activate them by exogenously adding to your medium that you're doing the transformation in acetosyringone. One of the other things I should mention about agrobacterium mediated transformation is that once the DNA gets into the cytoplasm it needs to be taken up into the nucleus in order for you to get stable transformation. And this will only happen in dividing cells when you get nuclear division. So your cells need to be dividing. Now fortunately for us when we wound cells one of the first things that happens is that you get cell division. But if you do have uh, tissues you need to kick them into cell division in order to get stable nucle nuclear transformation through agrobacterium. <laughs>